Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is there an echo now? There is not an echo. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, it's just uh, just me and Joel. Uh, we're going to be... We decided to launch another stream because me and Joel are nerds of many flavors. And uh, we're going to be talking about books today. Uh, specifically, The Hobbit uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, we're going to just go over our thoughts on it, favorite moments, all that jazz. And, uh, well, hope you guys enjoy. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, um, I don't, like, we chose The Hobbit because uh, we're going to, nerds on books is, like, tracking the journey through nerd, at least mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, like, like most people, especially somebody who was raised, like, kind of a religious household. Tolkien was like, this one's exceptional, you know. And I, I uh, vividly remember when I got it. I think I was in, like, fourth grade. And they were, and it was weird because I got into Tolkien because we had gotten a computer. And it came with Lord of the Rings. And I was like, what is this greatness? Mm -hmm. My mom's like, oh, my God, you've never read Lord of the Rings? We went to the store and bought The Hobbit and, like, all, all like, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and the Return of the King. And I remember, I think I read it in one sitting. Like, I think I read The Hobbit in one sitting. <laughs> so, I mean, do you remember your first time reading it? Uh, I think I picked it up in grade school at some point. Um, I remember, I think I might have been in, like, junior high age and i was a bit of like a jerky little kid even though i was a nerd and one of my uh buddies was like super into lord of the rings and star wars and everybody else wasn't for some reason and then uh we were kind of like rivals in junior high and then finally i like you know i'm gonna see what this kid why this kid likes this book so much and then i read the book and i was like oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I remember like this was my first like this, this was like the coolest thing in the world to me when I was little. Like that, like those the, the maps that like are on most fantasy books now. You know, here is Middle Earth. You know, but he, but what made Tolkien so cool? He had like the, the runic yeah. writings. You know, yeah, it's but one it's of the such most... a wonderful story. It's an, I I've started my own children on it. You know, it's basically like any other like it's like the bedrock of any fantasy novel like he, he basically created yeah. a work that just like echoes down through like all of fantasy uh basically any concept of like elves like dwarves orcs all that stuff is just like it comes from you know tolkien it's it's oh yeah you know like there's no people try and like get away from it sometimes but it just like it kind of rings hollow because like you're just trying to like not make it tolkien and you could just right it was, it was, um, the first that I can remember that took, like, a hard, like, veer away from, you know, like, the, the Fae of Legend, like, the Elves, the Hildefuck, mm -hmm. and all the other, you know, like, the, the, like, the Fae mm -hmm. from, you know, where, like, Elves could be everything from these little things that would help you in your house to, like, all kinds of other stuff, to, like, these tall, immortal, beautiful things, you mm -hmm. know, which I really think is, like, with water is responsible for like paving the way for like you know stories like you know all of forgotten realms dungeons and dragons um obviously aragon those kind of stories you know and mm -hmm. all of these other like great stories mm -hmm. of these these like learned ancient beautiful people that are just like soaked in magic and uh i mean it's just it was it was a wonderful story and it had the best beginning mm -hmm. of any story you know like and i'm gonna read it word for word the first the first paragraph of the hobbit was in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit not a nasty dirty wet hole filled with worms or and an oozy smell nor a yet a dry bare sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on to eat it was a hobbit. and that means um like <laughs> it's such a great start yeah because like already you're like and weren't you, what are you talking about? Weren't you telling huh? me he pretty much just like wrote that down on a napkin and he's like, that's going to be a good book. And then he just ran with it. Yeah, like I don't know the accuracy of it, but like I do know he was a professor at the time and was reading a profoundly boring paper and started like just crawling notes. And that line 
came to him while grading a particularly boring paper. Now, this is from what I understand. I am by no means a Tolkien historian. I am a Tolkien fan, but, like, I have not chronicled his life. But, like, mm -hmm. that is what I remember reading was, like, thank God that student sucked. <laughs> like, was, like, this is so boring right. because we got Lord of the Rings out of it. Like, could you imagine they're looking back and being like, what was your contribution? And they're like, well... There I was, freshman year of college, and I sucked. And I actually bored J.R.R. Tolkien so bad he started writing The Hobbit. I wonder if he and ever told that looked, student. Like, oh my God, thank you for sucking. I wonder <laughs> if he ever told that student that story. If, you yeah, could you imagine that, like 20 years later, this quintessential piece of <laughs> fantasy literature? I mean, essentially creating the genre of fantasy. And him coming up to you be like, hey, man, you know? You're the inspiration for this whole thing. And you're like, oh, great, thanks. How did I inspire you? You're <laughs> fucking <bummed. laughs> You're boring as a rock. <laughs> yeah, you, if, honestly, I've read geology textbooks. You that bored me. more interesting than what you wrote about. So bad. <laughs> that I had to ent enter, <laughs> that I had to entertain Boy, myself to stay pipe, awake. <laughs> You gotta remember, Tolkien's got the pipe. So. You bored me so bad that I had You to... bored me so bad <laughs> that you all... <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. But yeah, no. Um, I just, I love the journey. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is, when I read it, like, again, I'm like fourth, fifth grade, so I'm like 10, 10 or 11 years old. And, um, to me, it was, like, the most harrowing journey of, like, all time, mm -hmm. you know? Like, like he was this, this hobbit who lived in this little... And I equated it, like, the Shire is a small town. Like, I'm from a small town. So are you. Yeah. And, like, I remember thinking, like, how awesome would it be if, like, all of a sudden I'm sitting at my parents' house in Papa Grove, and I went through the whole journey. And then this old man is like, we're going on an adventure, and I brought... Kicks, your door, kicks your door down. Where's yeah. Joe? <laughs> Just like Where's some, Joe? His so, hyper ass looks like he's able to steal shit. Some old guy that your dad always used to complain about is being a little right. bit too, causing a little bit too much trouble. <laughs> right. That somehow not, like always came back around again, even though he's ancient. Yeah, yet never seemed to get any older or younger. Just <laughs> just existed at this perpetual eighty years old. You know, like. <laughs> Just some like, like Leslie Nielsen, who was like born at sixty years like, of age, you know. It's like some dude that like some dude from the Civil War burst down, busts down your yeah. door. Jordan, you're coming with me. Coming with me. We have an adventure to go on. I mean, actually, if we're going down, if we're going off of Hobbit timeline, that would be happening to you like right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Bilbo was like what forty years old or something, which is like a he's teenager. fifty years old when he left that Shire. Yeah. What I mean, it, it you got follows... a decade, it could still happen. You could have some grisly Vietnam War vet going, we're like, we're going on an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> some ancient dude being like, it's time to go find these short, fat people their kingdom in a mountain. <laughs> like, but then, but I remember, like, it, it was a brilliant journey. Like, you took it through and you got to meet, like, Bjorn, the shape-changing giant that was mm -hmm. a werebear. Um... No, like, he, was, he was just a man. He wasn't a giant. He was just a giant bear man. Oh, well, you know, when you... Re everything's from the perspective of the Hobbit. I remember him being, like, this, like, massive, massive thing. Yeah, because he's just a huge dude. He's one of the first men. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. But, like, I remember how... Um, like the, what is it, Orchrist and Glamdrig? Yeah. The goblin, the, the uh, what is it, Nasher and Biter, the goblin slaying swords, like yep. those. Uh, or that was. Uh, Orchrist. Yeah, so right? it, was, it, was, it was Orchrist and Glamdring. It was uh, Goblin Cleaver and Orc Smasher. Goblin Biter or something? Or, go or orc, orc Cleaver and Goblin Biter, I think. Yeah. They were so amazing. That was like I remember thinking to myself, like, um, before we get added, huh? It, you continue. <laughs> no, no. I I remember. I didn't understand like the, the concept of what a magic item was. You remember, like, no, there was. Yeah. I mean, I had read other books like 
Oh wow, we were. Um, huh? Glamdring is the foe hammer and Orcris. Oh. Is the goblin cleaver. Ah, so yeah, we were totally wrong. Yeah. I thought one was like biter. And... Yeah. Well, that's what the but goblins then... called them was biter and basher or something like that. But what I didn't understand, okay, like first off. The whole idea of, like, defeating the trolls, like, mm -hmm. that was amazing to me. Like, the mm -hmm. idea of coming in and where he was like, let me just bullshit you until you, uh, until the sun comes up. And it was, like, purely by accident. Frodo didn't, like, Bilbo didn't know that stuff. Yeah, he just did it. He didn't know anything about it. He's just like, oh, <laughs> I guess. You well, know, and then, like, Gandalf you find out later that Gandalf no figured out, and he's like, he's like, Fro he's basically like, Frodo, keep talking. <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just the thing that was so funny is Gandalf is undeniably one of the most powerful characters in the book, right? Yeah. Yet whenever there's a problem, he's kind of like, "I'm gonna let you figure this out." Well, because he's essentially uh, he's a what the frick? He's in a starry. He's not supposed to yeah. actually directly interfere. He's just a guide, a shepherd. Yeah. Except when Balrogs come, then in but that's a different book. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. apparently once you change your clothes, you can just interfere all you want. Well, it's because he resurrected. It was yeah. literally like, he basically pulled a, like, he basically pulled a Saiyan maneuver and was like, if you die without, if you almost, almost die, you come back ten times stronger. Oh my god, so much. <laughs> but, um, like, it's just, I don't know, I, I love the world. Like, Tolkien painted a world to me that started my entire fantasy, like, yeah. thought process. You know, like, while I do enjoy, like, the over-the-top, like, you know, hand-waving and incantations and all the other stuff of Dungeons and Dragons magic, you know, where, like, mm -hmm. you need to have, like, your promote components and your focuses and all this stuff. But the way that the wizards, you know, like Radagast and Sauron and, you know, those two blue ones that I can never remember their names, existed... Yeah. They, uh, it was so subtle. Magic mm -hmm. was so subtle in that world. But it, well, that's I, why I it's, say it's considered probably. a low fantasy. That's that's why it's you. You m magic isn't supposed to be the like the the real like power behind like uh, like Gandalf and the other wizards is their like long livedness and like their wisdom and knowledge as opposed to like able, the strength of their magic. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which made the story so much more relatable. Yeah. You know, like, you could you could imagine that happening. Like, you could imagine yourself, even somebody who had no interest in mm -hmm. fantasy or no, no experience in the world of fantasy, take that journey of adventure with you, mm -hmm. you know, like, through your, your, your wits and your own cunning, you know, you could have a sword or find a sword, mm -hmm. you know, and go on an adventure of legend no as opposed to like in dungeons and dragons or the high fantasy settings like you have to be able to like hold fire in your hands and like be able know, to communicate with be them. able to lift 10 men <laughs> yeah like i saw this tiktok i think i shared it with you mm -hmm. <laughs> of this guy taking the D D, &D, and this guy's massive like yeah, he bends nails with yeah. his hands and he like did. And he the... only had a sixteen strength. Yeah. And you're I'm like, what sure does like... a twenty strength look like? Thor Bjornsson. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, like, that's pretty much. I would. I would hope that Thor Bjornsson would be able to like, like do do the entire thing and so, score a twenty strength. Yeah. Someone, I mean, let's, like, when you let's think campaign, about it, like... let's campaign for that. We want we want Thor Bjornsson to take the D and D strength test to find out what his strength score is. Right, I would like to see who is the strongest, who has a 20 strength level. Mm -hmm. You know. And then I want to see, like, Jackie Chan do the dex test. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> but that's another thing, too, is, like, the greatest, the, the part of The Hobbit that was the most amusing to me was he was like, we need a burglar. Who's a burglar? And to me, the whole thing felt like Gandalf was like, uh, that guy. And they're like, why that guy? And he's like, don't question me. I'm old and know things. And they're like, okay, don't question things. He's old and know things. Yeah. Like, Frodo, 
like Bilbo never came out of his house. Yeah. <laughs> like Bilbo was like uh, he, a journey he to left, him. Was, he basically never, like never left his block. <laughs> right, never. <laughs> As yeah. far as it took for him to get groceries and pipe weed, that's as far as he went. Yeah. He, and he, like, he walked as far as the grocery store and the dispensary and then came back home. <laughs> exactly. And then he talks about how his grandfather had shamed the entire name of Baggins or Cook or whatever because he went on an adventure and I think he went like one town over. Yeah. And they're like, that wild to... bastard's out of control. Didn't he go to Bree? Isn't that it? Yeah. Which yeah. is like outside the city limits, it sounds like. You know? Yeah. That's like somebody being like, oh, you're from Rockford and you visited Chicago? Yeah. Preposterous. Yeah. What kind of wild man are you? Actually, no, it'd be like you being in Powell <laughs> Grove and you walked to, like, downtown Rockford. Oh, my God, yeah. From so my like understanding, anyway. 25 miles total, and they're yeah. like, man, this man's out of control. Yeah. You never know what are we doing, you know? Yeah, it was, like, the the... And what's funny is, like, when you're from a small town, it even makes it that much more relatable. Yeah. Like, because you know people like that. Do anything. Huh? Because you know people like that. Yeah, you do. You know, like, how far have you gone? They're like, I went to Rockford once. Yeah, it's because it's for the only grocery stores. Of course you went to Rockford. You know? The grocery store was closed because Phil was sick for a week. (laughs) Yeah, right? When you know the owner of the store by name, you're like, oh, yeah. But yeah, it, it's like I got a kick out of it. Like, like to me, it was such a relatable story. Yeah. And then, and then it takes that hard turn, you know. Uh-huh. It takes the hard turn of now you've got Smog. Yeah. You know, you've and now you've got. I I would say the whimsical adventure ended when they got to the Goblin Cave. Yeah, yeah. Then it suddenly became a lot more serious. But it's like by that point in time, you've been hooked in. Mm-hmm. You know, like you've already seen him running with his contract and the the singing of the or of the uh, like they said him complaining about how loud the dwarves were. Yeah, they all got the to way to now point. they're in these creatures that can like swim through stone. Yeah, it got to a certain point where it's like the dude the, the Bilbo's like, holy shit, I have to c- keep convincing them I'm a burglar. Otherwise, they're just going to leave my ass here, and I don't know right. how to get back home. <laughs> and then, and then, like, I remember the cleverness of meeting Gollum and the riddle, mm. the riddle game. Yeah, like it was. It had nothing to do with burglary. It had nothing to do with anything. It had to do with just, are you cleverer than the next person? And what's what's so funny is like when you're little, and and I relate this to my children. You know, because my children do this to me all the time. They're like, what has three legs in the morning? You know, like that kind of, those riddles. And if you know a riddle, suddenly you're super smart. Yeah. And it's not that you're super smart. It's just that you understand the way the riddle was told. But at the time, it's like the supreme battle of wits. You know? Well, yeah, because like like, back then you can Google the answer. (laughs) Right. But it's like to be able to give a riddle out, like that was like a true test of genius, you know? And, yeah. uh, like, I mean, and you've been hearing the stories, you know, like that guy that had to answer the question of the space, what has four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three in the evening, and he's like, oh, man. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, you're so smart. Nobody would have figured it out. Yeah. You know, but it was, it was, it was very much geared toward children at the time. And yeah. It took you to where you're like, you, you thought, like, I could have this bad. I could yeah. do this. You know. It's funny. There's a, there's a. I don't know if it was a web series or something I was reading for a bit, but it was basically like these people from like real life that got sucked into a like fantasy world with actually like RPG, like D and D stats. Like they'd like have like, a little like thing in their head, like, Oh, you leveled up this skill or you leveled up that you oh leveled God, up as a thing. And uh, there was one part where this like girl who like, was like, Oh, this, uh, she met a dragon and dragons don't, aren't supposed to exist anymore basically or they're like basically non-existent and she met a dragon and then she like really needed the dragon's help so she was like so she decided to like challenge the dragon to like a riddle thing and then like the funny part was like this was a dragon that has lived it's it's basically like a D dragon that can like uh, like shapeshift so he can like take on the appearance of a man or whatever and uh she like 
starts, she like throws out a couple riddles and he's like, he like throws out the answer in like five seconds. And then she like tries to like do a like a complic- super complicated like math problem. Like if this train leaves such station at such and such time, like, <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. And he's just like, 47. <laughs> That's and she's odd. like, and then she eventually gets like through like to a point where she's like, I'm, she just gives up <laughs> because she like realizes that it's like there's no way she can defeat him. Because in reality, if you think about it, like so this dude's lived for millennia. It's like, yeah, and he's like dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. Uh, you're not gonna beat him in a battle of wits or math problems and stuff like. That. I just I love like, but it's like I don't know if um. Max hasn't gotten, like, your son hasn't gotten to that point yet where, no. like, he's up. But as soon as mine got into school, they would be like, Dad, what's seven plus nine? Max does that. Like, they're, <laughs> like, they're, like, they're, like, they're, like I'm suddenly going to be like, fuck, I don't know. Here's the keys to the car and all of my money. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, like, but, but, 16. What? <laughs> yes, thank you. They, they had no idea how to do it. Your engineering degree has really paid off. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't think he realizes that I do math for a living. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but uh, it doesn't matter. He will still ask you all these. Questions. Yeah. But like, to beat Gollum with the the riddle competition, like, was mm-hmm. such like an attainable thing. And like, I remember being so excited. And like, even afterwards, I like annoyingly, like probably most people who read it at the at a younger age, like went out and was like, I need to bone up on my riddle skills. <laughs> like one day it's gonna be pertinent. Yeah. Like you're gonna be sitting in life. They're gonna be like, I know you want this house, but what babbles but doesn't speak? And you's like a river. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, that's what know, I should but... do when I sell my house. I should just be like, hmm. <laughs> you must <laughs> I have I, but I cannot see the final part yeah. before the closing. <laughs> <laughs> before this offer is accepted, you must tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was and then he stole the ring you know which then allowed him to actually become like a pretty legit murderer yeah you know because i mean like who'd have thought turning invisible and being naturally silent you know would make you an awesome murderer yeah but yeah here we are oh huh, weird yeah weird because you exist but, at, a, at a level that people like don't look down to ever right <laughs> like, you're I already for- <laughs> below eye level I and for- now you're invisible <laughs> and naturally silent like yeah I forget Max is there sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's how they lose track of the hobbits. <laughs> yeah. See, I never lose track of my child because my child is a constant kinetic hurricane. <laughs> like, I could not imagine ever losing Leo because Leo's like, hey, 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 you know what? Hey. <laughs> no, Max will just quietly follow me and I'll like turn around and just like knock him over like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, damn, how'd you get there? <laughs> you moved so fast. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, and then we moved on, like, the story did get progressively darker. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Well, and then it's we like his What was the name of that town? Uh, D- uh, Dale. Yeah, the one on the river. Right Dale. at the base of the mountain. And the guy was like, I have an arrow that I have... <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, that is destined that for is, greatness. That is the, never... No, it's like he, he's never missed with an arrow or something like that. Yeah, he always recovers it. Yeah. I just loved it. He's like, I have one arrow destined for greatness. Just one. Like, you're an archer. Like, By the way, I hate, I hate how in The Hobbit that was a ballista bolt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Because it wasn't. It, was, it took it away. Like Because it was supposed the, to be, he's like this longbowman that was basically like the best hunter in the town or whatever. <laughs> right. And the fact that it was like, what, the size of like a, a half dollar or whatever? Yeah. Like, I don't know, but I remember like like Smog's belly was impenetrable because of the uh, the hoard of gold that it slept on, and yeah. it like embedded in its chest. So yeah. they did like one little spot where like a jewel fell out. Yeah, he's like, "That's the kill zone," you know. But I mean, it was still the perfect story. Well, and, the, and I, then, but then, like the the fact of the matter was the that he only found out about it was because. Frodo was telling the dwarves about it. He's like, the only weakness I saw was one right below his armpit. Yeah. <laughs> there was a missing scale. Which you know, was... And... Go ahead. Which wasn't that from, the, like, the last time Smog had, like, gone at Dale? Like, attacked Dale? He, like... Yeah. 
like yeah. the the guy's ancestor had like shot the arrow that knocked that scale off or something. Yeah, and it was the same arrow. The one thing I didn't understand though in that story is okay. Now this is going into like most predators, and like like this is my my uber nerd part of myself where I like overthink things. But it's like I would look at Maug and be like. It was a, uh, it, it, like, like he's always like, like, I can smell you. All right, so you can smell him, but like you can't find him. Like I know he's quiet and he doesn't move around, but like he's quiet and invisible. Well, that's but, what like, happens. Is by the you end, you started he, out being like, like he, you he's know moving, you're hiding. Well, because like you know, like sets of smell is kind of like a thing that like permeates it. You can't like necessarily like pinpoint it. You got to move around. I don't then, know. I, I have and then by the time that's the whole thing was like Bean. Frodo was like talking from one spot, but it took him took him a minute. But he eventually pinpointed the source of the smell and the noise. I don't disagree. Like I have dogs, and they find a lot of stuff by just sniffing it out. Yeah, I think just smog was lazy. But he didn't. Yeah, because <laughs> he didn't move around. Like, like, but like if you think about it, your dogs they move around and then like yeah. track the smell to the source. Smog, smog was, like, smog was just laying it. there. And Smog was just He's like, listen, I can tell you. Like, but I'm not. I'm like really comfortable. So. Smog was like enter- being entertained for the first time in like what a hundred. I can't remember when the Lonely Mountain yeah, fell. Yeah, like, like a couple forever. hundred years. So he was like, he was like, huh? Somebody came in my house. It's like this is intriguing. Yeah, I don't have any cake to offer them, but we will have conversation. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it was. It was um. It was though. I well, always also it was remember, funny. it was a smell that he would like. Like he knows what men and dwarves smell like. It was a smell he had never smelled before. So he's like, "What the hell is this shit?" <laughs> yeah, you smell short. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You smell like. Is that patchouli I smell? Yeah. Is that what's all over you? you yeah. Know? I always, I do love the the characteristics of like what the hobbits are portrayed in. Is these like dapper little English gents, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the re- but their lifestyle is literally eating and getting stoned out of their mind. Eating, drinking, like, and getting stoned. So so we're going with the the premise that pipe weed is is pot. Well, that's what I believe it was supposed to be. I don't know. I think it was. I I I could I could see either it's I could see it being tobacco as well. I don't oh know. nope. It says right here, due to a due to a Google search, so you know it's one hundred percent error yeah. free. However, as funny as marijuana and Middle Earth sounds, Tolkien confirms that pipe weed is tobacco, not cannabis. Told you. So uh yeah, I still like to pretend it's weed. Because then I get to remember like little little like stoner hobbits. Yeah. Or like uh, you know, Gand- Gandalf getting like high as fuck with Bilbo before the party. Yeah, like Gandalf <laughs> suddenly is like Billy Nelson yeah. <laughs> instead of like Gandalf is like and Bilbo's like Shaggy. B- Bilbo and Bilbo and Gandalf are like cheeked and Shang is like, I don't know, man. He's like, I think I don't, know, I don't think people are gonna like this trick at your party, man. <laughs> I just, I imagine him like Shaggy. He's like, I don't know about going about this burger thing, but like, I'll give it a go. You know? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf being like Willie Nelson, being like, hey, hey, get married, D. Relax, man. It'll be all right. Just like one of those like grizzled old right? babies. <laughs> and the dwarves being like perpetually intoxicated. Like, yeah. I just imagine it's more like, like, 70s like roadies like being like you want to go do something <laughs> you know and i know that's not how it was intended but like i imagine it like half the time like i think it would be funny but yeah. I, I like Tolkien did such an amazing job in creating like the dwarves as being like these these characters made of stone you mm-hmm. know and these like stubborn old assholes Mm-hmm. that are like, are you going to share the gold? And they're like, well, there's a literal mountain filled with gold. They're like, yeah, we don't have enough. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yes, you do. <laughs> you have enough to literally blanket the Shire and like 
four inches deep of gold. And they're like, eh, uh, but do we really? It's only it was 13 people. Yeah. <laughs> We're supposed what? to split it 13 ways. 13 ways. Yeah. 13 ways. That's not a lot funny. of... That's not a lot of gold left over. <laughs> In the movie where they portrayed the size of the horde, like, was the largest horde yeah. of gold I've ever seen anywhere. Yeah. Like, like even smog my, could swim in it. <laughs> right. Like, even my, my child imagination of, like, vast amounts of gold were still nothing compared to that. Like, there mm. was a gold avalanche in yeah. that. In the, and I'm like, this is much larger than I have foreseen. <laughs> you know. But then I also realized I think I had smog like the size of a horse when I was younger. Yeah. You yeah. know, not like hundred like... feet, not like a blue whale with wings. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But I don't know. They it's it, that's what makes it fun, is like the interpretation of what it was. Like like your version of smog might have been like this, you know, massive, massive thing. And I'm like it's like a thoroughbred. Well, the the wild like, thing. Think... Yeah. Well, the wild thing is Smog. When you like compare him to like other like uh, Lord of the Rings dragons, he's not even like the largest uh, no dragon not. that ever lived. I don't. I don't know much about the dragon, but um, I do know there was one series that I wanted to take a, that I do want to talk about, and it's one of my favorites. And they're dragons never stop growing like they're immortal and they never stop growing and the oldest dragon is like literally a mountain range like with dirt that fell on it because it's been sleeping for like fourteen thousand years like those kind of stories are neat I'm trying to see if this is the one. Oh yeah this will be good which one give me a second Oh, this is not great. Resolution, never mind. What? Oh, you were trying to find the chart? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Keep talking. <laughs> I don't know where we were at. Oh, yeah, the battle. Then then it ended with, like, the battle of the five armies. Yeah. Which was, like, the dwarves came back, which is always silly, like, to me. Like, the dwarves came back. And which, which I always took it as like the the, the dwarves coming back being like like your your estranged family found out you won the lottery. Yeah. Like, like that's what I took it as. Like like Thorne is like I found the <laughs> I am the king under the mountain. They're like, Can I borrow fifty bucks? <laughs> All of them being like, You got some gold for me, dude? I'm not finding a good resolution picture where no, I can it's actually okay. read the names. But... <laughs> It's okay. This is just a startup pilot episode. We don't have to have all this preparation. We'll get, we promise we'll be better prepared for the next next upcoming Nerd Gen book. But uh, we're just, I do feel like this is uh, one of the best starting points in entrance into Nerd Gen. Like, I've, I've gotten the audiobook for my children to listen to it in the car. And uh, they have the same level of, like, you know, they'll shut up and be like, oh my god, this is the best story oh, ever. Oh, never mind. At least in this size, this one, it's the, it's, Smog's pretty big compared to the rest of them. Yeah. Hold on. I know the, the one guy. that burned, what is it, Celeborn? Uh, was it? That's not his name. Something. The, the one in Lothlorien. What's wild is, and we'll zoom in here a little bit. I don't know who the, the who did this, but uh, uh, the gold one in the back, that's apparently Smaug. Uh, the, the, let's see. That uh, one is definitely bigger. Yeah. You know, number three is the, the purple guy here is uh, that Spyro for reference. There's oh, okay, that's very scary. <laughs> uh, apparently not. Uh, Alduin is number eight right here, so Skyrim. So if you thought Alduin was scary when you're playing Lord of the Rings, or playing Skyrim, like, think again. 
<laughs> yeah, right? Like, well, who's number six? Number six is Flemeth, who, I mean, that's, I don't That sounds like Pern. Uh, Dragon Age. No, it's not. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Go up, go up. Yeah, is Falcor is in there. Someone did Falcor. Falcor is in there? Yeah, and Falcor oh is right there. So. Yeah, like, I mean, he's not tiny. Who's number one? Uh, number one is Fluffy. I think that's from Pokemon. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Fluffy. That's <laughs> for Pokemon. <clears throat> is uh, Safira in there from Aragon? Uh, Safira is not in this one, but uh, Toothless is in here. It's at number seven right here. Oh my god. Toothless, the scariest dragon that was supposed to be absolutely just like a murder machine but like no it's okay it's okay. yeah so it's like as a as i said i swear i saw one that was like had like all the lord of the rings dragons in it and stuff but give me a minute well he was big enough to like be scary for us yeah. he definitely was bigger than a horse yeah so like, definitely saying, bigger I'm than what correct. you thought it was yeah definitely bigger than what i thought it was just shows like how sheltered you are as a child. Yeah. You know, like how big is the moose? Eh, it's about four feet. And then you're like, hey, you find out no, they're like 15 feet tall. You know, casually stepping over cars. And no, the, the one that's the size of a horse is Drogon from D Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, near the, but not near the end. Near the end, they were like the size of a. Like, yeah, but we're not, we're not, oh yeah, I guess, yeah, we got Drogon later on in season seven. It's, I was looking at another one. Yeah, we are, we're probably not going to be talking about those books because they are a, no. honestly, yeah. like, I love the show and the books are entertaining, but like, they're so hard to follow. Yeah. It's you're like every, I swear, like every other sentence, he's like, new person. Oh, here we go. Here's, here's a. So there's a there's a dragon mentioned in the Silmarillion, and uh, as a size comparison, we could go with the Silmarillion. That was a good book. It's the reference book. So if you go in, so the little tiny guy there, that's Smaug. This yeah. is in well, Caligon. This is one of the like Caligon the Black. The biggest dragon in in uh, in fiction Tolkien. History. Yeah, well, according to the, this fiction history, but also in the course of you know Tolkien lore. Yeah, that is pretty great. But yeah, we have we have more. Uh, there will be more stories to talk about. That's Tiamat. Tiamat is in there. No, that's King Ghidorah. No, it's Tiamat. Shut up. Uh, I mean, it's. I read the. Th oh no, maybe it wasn't King Ghidorah. Let's look up. Oh yeah, it was Tiamat. Aha! Yeah. They also had King Ghidorah in there, so. Yeah, well. That's King Ghidorah. Yeah, so King Ghidorah. Oh, they didn't even put him in this picture. What the hell? Smaller than Tiamat. That's all we care about. Yeah, that's what matters. That's all we care about. But, yeah, brief. Brief go oh no, here we go. So like they had this one. And number nine is uh Oh come on. I can't read it. Who is the big one? This is the big green one? I'm trying to figure yeah. that out. Is that Rayquaza? I, no, it's Nadra from oh from Ze from Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Oh, Lion. okay. So like, so they had this initial chart with with Tiamat and stuff in it, and then they're like, oh, by the way, here's Encalicon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just massive. So it looks like uh, King Ghidorah was bigger than. Uh, Oh, here's the size chart. So there's Tiamat. There's King Ghidorah. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> yeah. Who's the who's the standalone one? 
right underneath the little like that one. This one, this is Deathwing from World of Warcraft. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, I don't. We're care getting about that. we're getting very distracted, but um. I just wanna, dragons are fun, man. They are. We could talk about dragons constantly. Like, I that became like the quintessential part of that. anything that had to be fantasy. It had to be a dragon somewhere. I don't care if the dragon's just like sitting in the background, like you know, just doing dragon stuff. Yeah. Like you're like, where are the dragons? Like, but they they delivered in Tolkien. I I loved it. I thought it was good. So yeah. um, but that kind of wraps up our time for yeah, we can. for our episode one. We promise the next one will be better polished. We're still working the kinks out of adding the more content to our stream. Yep. Um, so be looking forward. We'll still have Nerds of Legend. Uh, we'll still have Talk Nerdy to Me. Now mm-hmm. we're going to be adding on uh, Mondays at 5, uh, Nerd Gun Books every once a month. And then we'll also be adding probably film and games and, mm-hmm. you know, other, you know, whatever kind of forms of nerdery tickle our fans. We can't be Nerds of Legend if we only do RPG stuff. Yeah, we have to do all nerd crap. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have some guests that are willing to come in. Much, much more learned literary people than we are yeah uh we'll be you know bringing some of their favorite books um and we hope you stick with us uh as always like and share if you like what you see if you have any comments be more than we're more than happy to hear of it at nerds of legend at gmail.com um mm-hmm. and follow all of our socials yeah those will be coming up in the next screen so if you would, give us a nice follow, and uh, we'll see you again on Wednesday when we're back in our campaign. Absolutely. Thank you. You guys have a good day. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, shit. I hit the wrong button.